In this second installment of iScore Baseball Tutorial, we will show you some of the new features available in Release 1.5 and answer some of the most frequently asked questions. If you have not already viewed the previous tutorial, please do so first to get an understanding of the basics. Many people have asked what the settings in the Options screen are used for. Export and Import are very nice features for several reasons. First, you can use Export to transmit your data to a remote location for safekeeping. In the event that your data is somehow lost through damage to your iPhone or other circumstances, if you have previously exported your data, it can later be imported and none of your work will be lost. Export is also useful if you are having a support issue. You can simply export your data and we will be able to review it and pinpoint the source of the problem. Gamecast is a feature planned for an upcoming version where, in real time, you will be able to make the games you are scoring available for others to view on the web or on other iPhones. One of the most requested features now available in Team Manager is cumulative statistics for the team. As in single game statistics, you can review the data on your phone or email the data to anyone by typing in an email address. Moving on to the game screen, you can now delete any unwanted games. As always, be careful because once a game is deleted, the stats cannot be retrieved. The new game screen has a few new items of interest. Visitor is now shown first to conform to standard practices. The game name can now be edited by typing new text and clicking the return button. The Options screen allows you to set the expected number of innings. Here you can also set the number of fielders for leagues that allow 10 fielders. The Scoring screen now shows both the current batter and the on-deck batter. A nice addition to the standard scoring view is the Pitch Location view. With a flick of your finger, you can enter pitch track mode. First click ball, strike, or foul, and then click on the location of the pitch in the strike zone. The speckle chart button here will allow you to review the previous pitch locations for the current pitcher. The numbers tell you how many pitches were in each zone. Above, you can set both the pitch type and the pitch speed. If, for example, a batter gets a hit, you can still record the pitch location by returning to the screen after the play has been scored. You may alter the pitch location at any time up until the next pitch has been registered. Another great feature is the previous at bat display. You will now be shown a player's batting spray chart and a description of his prior at bats as he comes up to the plate. You can turn this feature on or off at any time by touching the batter's name. One of the biggest questions from the previous tutorial was how to do substitutions. First, do not try to use the lineup screen for substitutions. Think of the lineup screen as the lineup sheet that coaches hand to scorekeepers before the start of the game. The starting lineup is entered once and doesn't change after the game starts. Proper substitutions are easily made by clicking on the fielder or batter you want to sub. There are actually two substitution modes in iScore Baseball, and these modes depend on how many players are batting. If all players are batting, as in most junior and adult leagues, then only fielders are substituted. In order to be in this mode, before the start of the game, make sure that all players in the lineup are marked as batting. If a player is injured or not able to play the game, then he should be deleted from the lineup before the game starts. Don't worry, this will not delete him from the roster in Team Manager. In this mode, having clicked on the fielder, it will now ask who will play that position. Choose the new player who will play that position. You can set up the entire outfield between innings this way. When you are finished, click Save. 
The other mode is a fixed number of players batting with batting substitutions allowed. This is the way Major League Baseball and most high school leagues are played. In this mode, you would set your starting lineup to have only the first nine players marked as batting. The rest of the listed players then become subs that can be brought in to replace active players. In this mode, substitutions become slightly more complex, but also more powerful. In sub mode, when you click on a player, you are given the ability to replace his spot in the lineup with a sub. The sub then disappears from the list of available subs and takes the player's position in the lineup. If you know what field position the sub will be playing, you can mark that now, or wait until the team takes the field and mark it later. We now see that the player who had been batting in the first position has been replaced. Let's give this player a hit. All substitutions for the currently batting team are made by clicking on the batter icon. This means that if you want to put in a pinch runner, click on the batter icon and replace the current runner's lineup position with the pinch runner. So in this example, let's replace the runner on first with a pinch runner. Click the batter icon to bring up the batting team subscreen. Click on the lineup position of the runner you want to replace. Click the new runner. Then click save. Now our pinch runner is on first. Let's have the pitcher throw a ball. The runner on first steals. If we look at our stats, we see the original batter had no plate appearance. He was replaced by the pinch hitter. We see that the pinch hitter had a plate appearance and a hit, and we see that the pinch runner had no plate appearance but had a stolen base. Now let's look at a double switch. A double switch is done by selecting the pitcher's lineup position, selecting the pinch hitter who will replace him, assigning the pinch hitter to a fielding position, selecting the lineup position of the replaced fielder, selecting the new pitcher, and assigning that pitcher to the pitcher position. iScore Baseball is very flexible, so you can even set up a game where one team is playing with subs and the other team is playing without subs. iScore Baseball takes care of the rest. By far the biggest request in iScore Baseball has been for a scorebook output format. With our 1.5 release, we are proud to announce game results output in scorebook format. The scorebook provides a comprehensive view of game progress, including how the runner advanced around the bases, hit locations, order of pitched balls and strikes, recording of fouls, play sequences, substitutions, and more. Furthermore, if you track pitches, the output will include the pitch location of every pitch for every pitcher. Statistics have also been enhanced to include a box score and comprehensive pitcher stats, along with full batting stats and team batting totals. In addition to the large changes, we have made a huge number of small changes and fixes to address customer issues. The bulk button has been replaced by the miscellaneous button, where you can perform less common tasks. Balk is still included, but there are now additional actions. You can skip a batter for any reason, and you will be asked whether or not skipping the batter will count as an out. You can assign an error to a fielder if, for instance, a foul ball that should have been caught is dropped. This will have an effect on a pitcher's calculated ERA. You can end an inning, or as one customer pointed out, end a half inning, when the game rules state that the batting team can only have a certain number of runs per inning and that limit is reached. You can also end a game early when needed. Small upgrades such as these can be found in many other areas of the application. Thank you for watching this second installment of iScore Baseball tutorial. We hope you are as excited about the 1.5 release as we are. We have tried to cover as many of the common questions as possible, but feel free to visit our website and forums at any time for additional information.